Greetings, welcome from Hope Central Church. I am Pastor John Mark McLean, lead pastor here, and uh, I know many of you are waiting to see me in person as I am longing to see you. Uh, it has been a long journey of not being in worship, and some of you are maybe being caught off guard right now looking at this video, and instead of hearing the words, you're thinking, something is different uh, right now, and it's because I've shaved my beard off. It's that time of year in the heat uh, where it gets itchy and I, I don't want to have a beard anymore. And as with many things in life, some people like it and some people don't. Um, Lila, my little girl, is in love with the fact that she can cuddle me and not get scratched right now. She thinks it's great. Uh, Mary Jo, my wife, prefers me to have a beard. She likes the way a beard looks. You can't satisfy everyone all the time. Uh, and we're in a, a kind of state in our world like that. There are a lot of things and a lot of decisions we have to make um, that are going to make some people very happy and, and some people are going to feel like we could do more or should do less, and we understand that. But I want to let you know where we, as your church leaders, the pastors, administration, um, and, and the council, where we are on going ahead. Um, so you're aware of that, and it is the decisions, or the decisions we have made to this point. First of all, uh, we are looking to be back in live worship at, here at our central campus the second weekend of July. Now, we're putting that out now to let you know about it. There will be sign-ups that you'll have to do to, in order to come to each of the services. We're looking to have two on Saturday, uh, a contemporary at 4 o'clock, a traditional at 6, and then again on Sunday, two services, one at 8 a.m. and one at 10 um, a.m. And the reason why there's a little difference in the timing of things is we, we have to have time between services um, to disinfect things and to let the disinfectant work. So our, our time changes are going to happen with that. If we need to add another service later, there'll be another one two hours later, which pushes it to noon. We know that's very late for many people, but we have to let the things sit and work uh, to cleanse the room. Now, we've thought about all the different ways we could possibly do that, using every other uh, section, perhaps, of seating, so that we don't have to disinfect everything as fully. Uh, but that means even less people coming to worship. You'll have to sign up, registering either through the internet or by calling the church office. We prefer the internet. It'll be quicker that way. You can call the church office if you need to as well. And, and here's what that's going to look like. When you come in to worship, you'll be seated in a specific place. You won't choose your seat. And you'll be both brought in and released um, by people who will bring you to a chair or bring you away from a chair. Um, communion will happen as you're leaving at the end of worship. We'll have to wear masks. Uh, temperatures will be taken on your way in and you'll check in for the service you've registered for. It's important that we do these things to keep people safe and to make sure that we have as many people in worship as possible. You'll notice as I'm sitting here, um, there's some tape on these uh, pews. Uh, there is white tape. They demark areas of about three feet. We had some uh, people sit down and marked how they could sit comfortably together. And there's black tape between them. You can only sit where the white tape is and there's six feet between those stations. It's every other pew to try to keep that six foot distance everywhere. It means we're gonna have a hundred or just over a hundred people, including the, if we use the uh, choir loft, maybe just over a hundred people in worship for each service. We know that's not a full service. It will not look or feel like what we used to have. The spirit will be the same. The spirit should always be the same in our worship together. The community will be important, but we will not be doing worship the way we have in the past for the time being. We will celebrate the day we can, but for now, this is where we are. For those of you who usually attend at our Lake Weir campus or down also at the Everglades uh, Rec Center, I want to give you a little heads up on what we're doing there. We want to get our legs under our, us and know how we're handling things here. We know we're very short of a lot of volunteers that have told us they will not uh, be available. Um, so we're going forward with what we have. We're going to establish worship here for a month, and then we're looking in August to start worship at the other two sites. Originally, we were told Everglades might not happen until November. Um, they're being very gracious to work with us on this. But again, they're setting the policy for building usage and how many can be there. Um, as of right now, the room only had 60 seats in it, and that's a, building that, a room that seats 500. So it gives you an idea of how they're trying to be safe. Uh, so we're looking at the first weekend of August to get back into those two sites. That is a movable date, depending on what happens down there. Um, but we're looking at those dates to get started in those other two locations as we have volunteers trained up and willing to do those places as well as here. So please be patient with that. We know none of this has been ideal, but we hope it's been meaningful and helpful. And as always, we pray that God will bless you and keep you in the palm of his hand until we see each other once more. I bid you peace. God bless.